I'm Amanda Patterson, and I'm a physiotherapist here at Zone Sports Physiotherapy. I'm Dr. Andy Polovich, and I'm a chiropractor here in Saskatoon, and I own and operate Polovich Chiropractic. Hi, my name is Craig Danso, massage therapist here at New Leaf Genetic Arts Massage Therapy uh, in Saskatoon. What I do at Zone Sports Physio is I'm a physiotherapist to help people achieve their goals and needs, uh, especially regarding sport performance, post-operative recovery, and musculoskeletal injury. So whether that's being able to walk after a surgery or being able to clear their lungs after having a diagnosis of cystic fibrosis or staying active and mobile and independent as a senior, like they all try to keep people active and moving. What we're primarily known for when we do treat patients, typically we work on the, the spine uh, of each patient and it's, it's targeted to making sure that the brain and the body are communicating better. You have clients that might come in just like they woke up in the morning, have a kink in their neck and they can't shoulder check now. Headaches, pregnancies, uh, like athletic injury, rehabilitation, prevention. So generally the physiotherapy treatment plan revolves around getting them back to a functional status. So sometimes people are here a couple times a week to once a week to hopefully being here less often. There are some clients that I see every couple months just for exercise progressions and odd symptom management. They are usually given exercises to work with at home to help kind of bridge the gap between the pain that they have while they're here and getting them back to where they want to be. So they end up leaving with a fair bit of homework after seeing me. Many people uh, identify us with, with back pain. If someone has lower back pain, mid back pain, neck pain, and headaches. If someone was to ask the public what a chiropractor does, often those, those conditions seem to, to creep in. Um, but then there's other issues that people might not be aware of. Typically, your you know headaches, neck pain, low back pain, those kinds of challenges where it's restricting people in what they want to be able to do, their quality of life issues that they're having, and we want to help address those. If people come in with injuries, it's it's different if it's not SGI or WCB, because then I always tell people it's like it's a long-term process. You're trying to fix it and then maintain it. Because injuries always, it can always come back if you don't, like, you know, if you've ever pulled a hamstring and it's like, okay, it takes forever to heal, but if you don't heal, like, strengthen it and get it back to, like, close to where it was before it got hurt, you can tear it again. Like, it's predisposed to re injury, and which is like, so massage, we're trying to, maintenance is just to try to get you at the optimum level where you're most healthy. I got into physiotherapy because I got injured a lot as an athlete in high school. So then I ended up going to see a physiotherapist a fair bit. So then just from seeing what they had to offer and what they did as a job, that's kind of what drew, drove my passion. I like that you could provide exercise prescriptions, you could do some diagnosis and treatment, and you end up just spending a fair bit of time with people. So there's just a lot of factors that appeal to me. So I went to the University of Saskatchewan for a four-year undergrad in kinesiology. And then from there, I did a two and a half year professional master's program in physiotherapy. Um, the physiotherapy program's quite intense. They squish it in so you don't get too much of a summer, but it's really great. Like everyone is, it's a close knit community. They think there's only 30 or 40 people in your class. So you develop good friendships with everyone there and good friendships with all the professors. It's just a very nice program to go through. Uh, from my undergrad degree in kinesiology, you can definitely pursue that into a professional degree as well. Uh, you can also just use it as an independent degree and become a kinesiologist or a certified exercise physiologist or go down the research path with a kinesiology degree. Well, I was in the seventh grade. I was always, I still play a lot of sports, so very active in sports, and I injured my arm pitching in baseball. And my dad took me to his chiropractor and I had no idea what one was uh, and it quickly resonated with me. Reason being is they were helping athletes. I figured if I, w if I couldn't play professional sports, I wanted to help people, you know, athletes as best as I could. And, uh, and I quickly found out it wasn't just, I was going for athletic injuries, but you know, they were helping anybody and everybody. Uh, they were doctors, they seemed to be really happy and it wasn't your traditional type of healthcare model 
uh, no drugs and surgery, and that really appealed to me even at that age. So I went to Walter Murray um, and then went to the University of Saskatchewan. In Canada, there's one school, um, there's actually two schools, but one is situated in Quebec and is purely for um, francophone speaking uh, students. I chose to go uh, to Minneapolis, Bloomington, Minnesota, to Northwestern Health Sciences University is what it's called now. Um, it was closer and it had a few different options that appealed to me. So yeah, I was 24 years old when I graduated uh, and it took me about six and a half years to get that done. But typically it's, you know, that's eight years worth of education or more and it usually takes about that amount of time before you're graduated and you're licensed and ready to practice. When I was in university, I was, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Physio, chiro, massage, uh, exercise therapy. And I, I took kinesiology, and then you kind of have to figure out what you want to major in, what you want to kind of focus on. And so I finished that, and I took a year off. And then I, uh, I was going through my options. I like to work with my hands, and I, I'm like really big into athletics, uh, really good into like fitness and all that stuff. So I was like, what can I do that kind of, kind of get paid to do something you already enjoy doing? So I was like, I looked into massage. It's a two-year program here, and so I asked some questions. I went for a couple. And then I went to talk to the counselors at the school and they're like, yeah, like, it, this could be for you. I, I went to university, but I didn't need to. If I came out of high school now, had I known, I wouldn't have gone to university. I would have just gone straight into massage, uh, two year program. It was five days a week, nine to three every day. And our teachers were hardcore. So if we were behind on a Friday, she'd just be like, see you guys tomorrow. And we're in on Saturday or we're in on Sunday. And there's no questions asked. It wasn't like, oh no, I'm like going out with the friends tonight, whatever. It's like, no, you, we have we have 2,300 hours. You have to like stay on top of your timeline. Otherwise, they'll just hold you back, and you can repeat it if you miss anything. So it was pretty intensive. Most of my clients come in for maintenance. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm fine, but I want to make sure my muscles are loose. I want to make sure that my joints are good. Make sure that you know people carry stress. They don't know they're carrying stress. So it's, it, people always think of stuff as in sickness is physical, whereas like massage, we have to deal with the emotional too. You know, you're at work every day, eight hours a day, you're sitting behind a desk, you're just behind a computer, and people don't think about the stress of being like, you know, the posture cramped over, cramped over every day. And then so you come in and they're just shocked that they're so tense in the shoulders, they're starting to get headaches, they might not drink enough water. So then you have to kind of set up a treatment plan to be like, this is how you can maintain your optimum health and then take care of yourself. A lot of the massages, like 50% what we do in the room and 50% what you do outside of here. So if you come and get a massage and you go out and you don't take care of yourself at all, you'll be right back kind of where you were when you first came in and it's just kind of, you're just yo-yoing instead of trying to get to an optimum place. So I have a client who started seeing me probably about five years ago due to a plethora of different injuries from shoulders to elbows to hands, just kind of entire upper body was injured. Along with that, he had a lot of comorbidities like high blood pressure, some cardiovascular concerns and some metabolic issues with his weight. Uh, from our programming, he was able to resolve the majority of his musculoskeletal based injuries and then take that and build on it into some lifestyle changes that have got him off of blood pressure medications, had him down to a healthy weight again and started to really integrate exercise into his lifestyle as well as just basic healthy choices. So he took kind of what we're building upon here from a rehabilitation sense and developed it into something that he can extend upon into his regular life to the point where he just has a little bit more independence, a little bit more body awareness and just better lifestyle changes overall. There was one particular female patient. She could barely walk. She was in tears. Her back pain was so severe that she would probably need an ambulance for her to leave the office. That's how much pain she was in. And I told her that. I said, you know, we'll see how this goes and I'm going to do the best to help you very gently um, and carefully. And um, did what I did and asked her to get up off the table. She couldn't believe the fact that she went from being completely bent over and bent out of shape to being able to walk around and the look on her face of amazement and and comfort and relief was unbelievable. So um, that's just a recent one and, and even when she comes in she still 
uh, very grateful for that result. And it was neat for all of us to see, including me, uh, how dramatic of a change occurred in an, almost an instant. Our, our pain scale for massage is like one to 10. So it's like three, four, five, it's kind of annoying. Six, seven, eight, it's kind of painful. Nine, 10 is like, it's really just like, I can't focus on anything else. I had a client who came in here and she was having migraines, like 15 migraines. Like it was at that level where she just like couldn't drive, couldn't focus on school, couldn't eat. It was just a mess. She comes in, her neck is like, like it's rock. And normally, you know, you work on someone for 10, 20, 15 minutes, it starts to loosen up a little bit. You might work the whole neck just a whole hour, but at some point it starts to loosen up. You can kind of get through the muscle. And I was like 45 minutes in and this is not budging. Like my thumb is just hitting rock. I was like, man, this is gonna be a problem. So like the 50 minute mark, it starts to finally relax a little bit. And she's like, my head's kind of clearing out, like the, the migraine's kind of leaving this side, but it's still kind of there. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's your first treatment. So you kind of have to get people's expectations tamped down that it took you 30, 40 years to get here. So we can't really fix it overnight. With her, she'd come and see me and we'd work the muscle down. Then she'd go see her chiropractor and he's like doing adjustments because her, uh, her vertebrae was rotated. So this chiropractor is like literally moving her like a tenth of a millimeter every treatment. And he's like, we're just trying to get it back to where it is. So you gotta go see your massage therapist because we have to relax the muscles. And so she comes and sees me like every week for like two years. And it was just like, relax the muscle, go get adjusted, relax the muscle. So the last time she went to go see him like, like 18 months in, he's adjusting as a pop. And then uh, she's just like, whoa, like my head just cleared up. And then he's taking x-rays. So he like, look at the x-ray, it's all lined up and like instantly cleared the migraines. It was a process, right? It's two years and you have to be diligent. Like she has to do her stretches. She has to do her exercises too. And then she, after that experience, she was just like going to medical school and she decided to go do chiropractic medicine instead because she was just like shocked that you could get that kind of relief. So that was like one of the most satisfactory one treat clients I had where it was like, you made a difference and then she used that to inspire to do that. So my typical day usually involves, uh, I work 10 hour days, so about 10 to 20 different people come in to see me throughout a day. They come in, we chat, we review their exercises, we see how their pain's progressing, and we either prescribe new exercises, we do a bit of hands-on treatment, uh, and then hopefully they leave feeling better than how they came in. And then for, besides that, there's usually some phone calls, emails, charting, that kind of thing to work on. Physiotherapy is very much a growing industry, especially in the private practice world, but it seems like more people every year are either applying to the university program or wanting to become involved with it, just because I think people take, um, they really appreciate staying active and independent in their life. So people are demanding it more. It's a growing industry um, because the public is becoming more accepted of it, as well as it's, uh, other healthcare professionals are starting to recognize its efficacy and its effectiveness and starting to work with us as well. So it's definitely becoming more widely used uh, within, within the population. It's, it's definitely a rewarding career because the number one objective is you're trying to help people, right? You, I never got into this to be like, I want to be rich or how much can I make? I didn't know how much massage therapists even made when I was looking at it as a career, I was just like, I need to do something in kind of the health and athletic field. And you know, what, what do I want to do where I can actually like, I'm like, okay, I want to work with my hands. I have a lot of friends who are physiotherapists that's, and I go to them too when I'm injured, but at least massage, I, I'm helping people who are injured or just maintaining healthy people already. You can come in here and there's nothing wrong with me. I feel good, I'm stretching, I'm drinking my water, I'm exercising, I'm healthy but I'm trying to stay at that level. So it's like, it's like, going, it's like going to yoga or you know, going to the gym. It's, just, it's part of your routine just to maintain your health. I think people who are a good fit for physiotherapists are people who like talking to other people, people who are generally caring and understanding in that sense. Um, you're dealing with people who are usually in pain or in a bad spot in their life. So you wanna be able to develop rapport and communication with them so that they see a little bit of the light at the end of the tunnel for their injuries. I, I think that having a little bit of an ongoing 
want to educate yourself is important as well. Being able to stay up to date with current literature and different sort of changes in the trends for the industry is really important. There's a lot of very smart people, you know, obviously you need to have good grades and need to use your head quite a bit and we need people like that in our profession. But you also have to be a, a people person and um, you know, if, if being with people doesn't energize you, then it might not be the best fit for you. But not to say you shouldn't be in healthcare or anything like that. You have to be able to communicate with people and, and, and uh, deal with a lot of their different issues in a certain amount of time and um, ideally enjoy it. So that would be the number one type of thing. There's a lot of different techniques in terms of if you're a small person or a big person, that kind of thing. Like, um, you know, a small individual can still be a chiropractor who doesn't have a lot of strength. There's lots of different techniques and you can have a different type of focus in your practice. You have to care about your clients. You have to care about yourself. You have to be interested like in the human body because there's a lot to know. Like for the first six months of school, we didn't even touch a body. We didn't do massage till second term because it was like anatomy, okay? Do you know where everything is? Physiology, do you know what everything does? Pathology, you know what, when something isn't working and then you have to kind of figure out like contraindications, what you can't work on. For kids coming out of high school, if you don't know how to study, it's gonna be a problem. So you have to know what's happening tomorrow. So every day we finish classes, our teachers like read this or read this, we're having a test on tomorrow. You had a test like every day. So you have to be on top of it. It wasn't crazy, we still had lives, we still went out, still had a good time. But when it was time to study, you kind of know how to buckle down and do that non-fun stuff, but <laughs> yeah.